On the back of the pocket, you can, and probably should, fuse two little squares on the ends of the pockets and baste some linen on there. Remove the basting holding the linen in place whenever you feel like it after it becomes redundant. Chalk the pocket line and both ends, and chalk a line down from the front edge, which will be the front edge of the pocket flap, and mark a line half a centimetre out from there. Line some doubled up fabric up to that, making sure that the grain matches. Copy off the pocket line onto the flap material, and add another half centimetre on the back end. On top of this line, add two and a half centimetres of inlay, and below it add 6 centimeters of inlay for the flap and seam allowance. On the back side of the bottom of the flap, add a centimeter kick out the back pocket. Curve the edges of the flaps and cut them out. Make two pairs of jets, each jet being 4 by 24 centimeters long side with the grain, obviously. Keep both pairs together, especially if the fabric is patterned. Mark the grain and the inside edges on both pairs. And let's just ignore the fact that the scrap I'm using looks exactly like an undersleeve. Cut two pieces of linen about 24 centimeters by one and fix them about 0.4 centimeters from the inside edges of the jets. On Celicia, chalk a straight line down for a length of 56 centimeters with a width of 24 centimeters. Use your pocket flap to copy off any slant for the top of the pocket bag. Cut it out like that so one side is slanted. For the facing in the pocket and for the flap, we're using lining. Just slap. Just slap the flap onto the lining and cut vaguely around it. You may like to pin them together so you remember which way round you want them. For the pocket facing, Chalk a box 24cm by 11.5, cut those out, and find where you need to machine them on the straight side of the silesia. And be sure that they're mirror images of each other. You could fill them together, but I think that's inadvisable in this case. Machine it with a half centimeter seam allowance. Do the same for the flap, using the wheel to ease around the corners. Iron up the lining on the silesia and machine a rough stitch at the top just to keep it there. Then you can either top stitch with the machine or prick stitch it. Back to the flap, cut away the excess lining, fold it inside out, roll the seam to the lining and baste it in place. Personally I think I had better results ironing it first and then basting it, but this is how it's supposed to be done. Iron it then, and mark on the pocket line, so 2.5cm from the top. Double check that the flap is uniform, and then baste the line. 
in case the chalk gets rubbed off. Line the flap up to the forward edge of your pocket and mark where the back of the pocket needs to be. Line the welts up to the pocket opening and base them to the pocket along the linen, being sure they're equal on either side of the line. Make sure you mark the edges of the pocket when you get the first one on though. Machine them all together, starting at the chalk mark of course, and following the inside edge of the linen. Remove the basting and check the front and back of the pockets are equal and secure. Cut down the pocket line, stopping one centimetre from the end where we'll cut the mitres. Iron those triangles out, and if you happen to have a block of wood, you could use it as a post iron press. It'll absorb any moisture not evaporated and cool the fabric, setting it more fully and quickly. Fold the lower welt up and the seam open. Not in, just open for now, and iron it. Pull the top jet through to the back and down and press it open. Fold the bottom jet through now and base them in place. You could take this opportunity to remove the basting that's holding all the linen in place. Iron the welts. From the front, move the four part linen out of the way so that you can sew the jets and seam allowances together, next to the first two stitches you made. You could technically leave the top one until you get the flap in place. Then secure the mitres, except this time we have a crease to follow, but still make sure that nothing is overlapping. Now remove all redundant basting and one more press. For attaching the pocket bag, start with laying the silesia onto the back with the bottom of the silesia lined up to the bottom of the jet, right side to right side. Pin or baste them and machine them together. Machine a foot's width and iron the seam down. Put a flat pocket into the pocket hole, baste it there, and double check the flap depth.
Put a small pleat into the pocket bag and pin it there, a few centimetres from the top of the jet and a couple of centimetres deep pointing downwards. Fold the sleeve up to meet the top jet and baste it in place. Baste through everything. Turn it over and baste the bottom jet in place so that it won't move. And you could do the same for the top jet if you haven't already machined it. Mark the stitch lines onto the pocket bag, so parallel with the front edge of the flap and slightly angled from the back one, and the bottom is 6cm up from the marked stitch. When machining you could do a right angle, or not, whatever you please, and then machine the top edge again, for the silicia and the flap. Look over your pocket and make sure it's good. Trim away the sleecher around the pocket, leaving about a centimetre all the way up, including the jets. Where the two jets meet, trim a pair of triangles and to remove a significant amount of bulkiness. You can also trim off the corners of the top of the bag. At the top, trim the flap and top jet to different lengths so that they sit more neatly together. Finally, detach on either side of the opening. We don't really need to remove all the remaining basting at the moment, but if you wanna. This borrows a lot from the double welted pocket, but in a lot of ways I think that there are superior methods and orders for the pocket, so maybe we could use them on trousers a little bit. Usually exclusively in the right pocket, we'll start with the pocket silicia and facing. Then cut out another piece of silicia of 12 by 21 centimeters for a ticket pocket of about 10 by 10 centimeters. Mark on the main pocket where the facing goes and needs to be sewn onto. Subsequently, place the ticket pocket silicia half a centimeter over the line and baste or pin it in place. Similar for the facing, place it under the ticket silicia fasten it as well. Machine both bits to the silicia with a half centimetre allowance. Seam allowance. Iron both seams down, place the facing and pocket silicia together and give it a light iron. Turn it all over and position the facing and pocket silicia right side to right side as though you are sewing it together like normal. Maybe pin the facing and pocket to the main silicia too. Machine them together. Machine the facing to the silicia with a half centimetre seam allowance to about half a centimetre beyond the stitching that's already there. And turn down and sew the pocket closed. Then do the same to the other side, but maybe starting at the bottom of the ticket pocket, I don't know. As a final detail, I would and did prick stitch all around it. You could go down around the pocket, or, or it just occurs to me that you could prick along the top of the ticket pocket. Then it just goes on like, you know, it did earlier. Patch pocket.
chalk on the pocket line and add 3 centimeters further towards the front. Lay a piece of fabric right side up, lined up to the inlay, and along the same grain. Mark the pocket line onto the cloth, and then the front and back too. Add 3 centimeters of inlay to the back side. Chalk a line a centimeter above the pocket opening. From there, measure up 5 centimeters. This is the welt. Chalk below the pocket line, going down 7 centimeters, and mark half a centimetre in from both sides of the inlay. This is the facing, and cut them both out. Baste a piece of linen to the welt, and baste three and a half centimetres of linen by 14 centimetres there. And on the facing, a piece 14 centimetres by one, and baste it half a centimetre from the top. Add some fusing to the ends of the pocket line, which I obviously forgot to do, and baste a largish piece of linen to the back of the pocket. Remove all the basting from these as they become redundant, or whenever. On Celicia for the pocket, measure 16 centimeters by 19. On one of those long sides, mark 3 centimeters down and make a slant. Cut both sides of the pocket out and cut the slant onto one of them. To sew the welt and slanted piece of pocket together, make sure that they'll sit straight, or as straight as they will, when unfolded. Sew them inside to inside, with the welt side that you didn't attach the linen to, with a half centimetre seam allowance. Mark a line one centimeter above the current pocket opening. Match the side of the welt that isn't attached to Celicia up to the line above the pocket opening and baste it. Mark the front and back of the pocket onto the welt piece and machine it with a one centimeter seam allowance. Line the facing up to the welts as well and baste in place. Chalk half a centimetre in from the sides of the pocket line, and you'll machine between those two for the facing. Machine them both with a one centimetre seam allowance. Cut the pocket opening and cut it to the half centimetre point that you sewed for the facing. Hence, cut a straight line up to the facing stitching and across to the welt stitching. Iron the welt up and it seams open. Then, fold the facing into the back and iron that open. Chalk the height of your welt, about an inch usually, but I'm going to take 1 25th of a centimetre from that though. Fold on that line and baste it. Baste it twice for good measure. To machine the welt, fold it down the front with this and keep the Celicia pointing upwards. Flip over to the back, move the facing out of the way, and fold the seam allowance up. Machine next to the earlier stitch, and you should only be catching the linen forepart in Celicia. Cut into the Celicia on both sides to the end of the pocket opening so that we can push it through to the wrong side.
line the other side of the pocket up to the current piece of pocket and baste it in place along the top. Attach the facing to the pocket. It really doesn't need to be anything special at all, but I, ju I just kind of want to fell it. If not already, mark the ends of the pocket onto the welt and press them down. Not with an iron, use a block to give them a crease, you know, as a guide. Yeah, I gave up on that too and used nine as well. Moving on! Use the widest stitch setting possible to make a pilot stitch and check whether it's where you want it. Let's not mince words here. My one's shit right now. However, if you like yours, switch back to your normal length and start at the top of the welt and be sure to back tack this time. And so to the bottom of the welt. You should be able to easily remove the pilot stitches. You don't need to pilot the other side, just machine it on. Close the pockets together, start at the welt and round the corners. You could easily chalk some guidelines onto it if you wanted to. Take out the basting holding the pocket together. Trim around the pocket stitching to about a centimetre, trim the top corners too. Cut away the inlay on the welt to around half a centimetre from the stitch line. Mark one centimetre in from both sides of the welt. Then, starting at one edge of the welt, fell the top to the one centimetre point and prick stitch down from there. Plus, reinforce the the bottom corner a little bit with some felling stitches too. On the rear side, on the rear side of the welt inlay, close to the shoulder, the inlay may be sticking up a bit, just push it down and hold it there as you're felling. I'll be honest I was a bit disappointed when learning the method for making breast pockets but okay. Finally, base the top of the pocket closed. Start with the height and width of your pocket. Add a centimetre on top for the bottom seam and allowance, then add two centimetres for the facing and half a centimetre for the seam allowance. Chalk on the seam allowance on both sides and the bottom. Curve the corners to your liking before cutting it out, but I'll do it in a bit apparently. 
Cut a piece of holland linen for the facing with the same width minus the seam allowances by the height of the facing minus the seam allowance. So two centimeters by the width, you know. Get out your silicia and place the pocket on it. Roughly cut around the patch and baste it along the top. Find the centre of the top of the pocket and chalk 2cm either side of it. We skip this bit when machining them. Trim away the bit of thread and take off the basting. Iron it towards the silicia. Fold the patch over at the top of the linen, inside out, right side to right side, and give it a cursory iron. Baste the two pieces together in preparation for machining. Remove the basting and trim away the silicia. Then if you remember the hole we left when first machining the patch and silicia together, flip it inside out through that. Baste and fill the hole closed now. Roll the seam in towards the inside of the pocket and baste it as you go around in preparation for ironing it. Having done which, remove that basting. Take whatever you're attaching the pocket to, usually a jacket or pair of jeans, and line it up to where you want it. Mark one centimeter in from both sides of the pocket opening to B and baste it in place. Start from the one centimetre point that you chalked and fell to the edge and down around back to the top and along to the other chalk mark. I had a video rendering while I felled it on, so according to its countdown it took me seven minutes. Mark a centimetre all the way around the pocket as a guide for the prick stitch you're about to put in. And, yeah, just like, do a prick stitch. Also, you could machine the pocket there, except, no you can't, if you know what I mean.
Remove the basting, including, if not already done, the basting holding the linen in place. Interestingly, I learned that you can effectively use a piece of cloth of the same fabric to remove chalk markings. Give it one last iron and you're good. Make sure that you have at least 5cm on either side and below your pocket, and draw its length and breadth. Chalk 2cm up from the top of the facing, and then half a centimetre above that, then half a centimetre on either side for the seam allowance. On the bottom and both sides, chalk a 2 and 4cm line from the finished pocket line. At the bottom corners of your pocket, draw a 45 degree line hitting the 2cm lines you drew and from the intersecting points, another 45 degree line, to the points that the finished pocket lines hit the four centimeter lines. Give those a half centimeter seam allowance, and the same for the four centimeter lines. Cut out along the seam allowances. Baste a piece of linen to the 2cm section of the facing, and baste all of the lines that you chalked, though not necessarily in that order. That said, you'd mark stitch the lines if you were making two pockets, where I'm only making one. Fold the corners of the pockets onto one another and pin them in place. Machine them together on the line that you chalked. Trim the edges and split the fabric in the corner and iron those seams open. Fold them right way out and iron the half centimetre seam allowances inwards, trying to keep the corners neat. Then fold the 2cm line outwards because that's how it's going to sit. Finally fold it inwards at the finished pocket line going all the way up on the seam allowance. Go 
completing both sides, fold the seam allowance atop the linen down. Then fold that down too. Baste it in place, making certain that the seam allowances are folded away neatly. Fell down the side of the pocket, felling the facing bit to the front of the pocket, as it were, and across the inside of the bellow, I guess. Do that to both sides, and now's also a good time to remove the basting holding the linen in place. On the front, mark a 2cm point down from the top to prick stitch along and hold the facing neatly. Do that and remove the basting. Put the pocket onto whatever you're sewing it onto, usually jackets or trousers, though I'm not sure why you're making a pair of bespoke walking trousers. That gives me an idea. <clears throat> Back to it, baste a couple of stitches atop both sides, following which start basting under the bellow. Using a pin to keep the rest of the pocket out of the way will be helpful. Mark a centimetre in from both sides at the top of the pocket, and from one of those points, start filling it across to the top of the pocket edge and down until you get to a little past the bottom of the facing, and start only filling the bellow with the seam allowance, putting the pin back in. Mark a centimetre in from the seam that you just felled on the bellow. Start prick stitching from the centimetre point that you marked a minute ago, prick stitch down to where the bellow starts opening, and start prick stitching along the line that you just chalked. When you get to the other side, come up to the front of the pocket and prick up to the top. Final stitch is along the loose flappy bellow. We'll prick stitch around the perimeter. Brush off the chalk and remove any and all remaining pieces of basting thread. Give it a final iron on the top of the pocket and underneath the bellows. I don't know, it's always been like that. <laughs>